Good evening to everyone 
and welcome to this wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. You're all preparing for the Stackner's recruitment exam. Medical surgical nursing is the main subject. Almost 50% of the paper is that. You also have a, a very important uh, uh, part in fundamentals of nursing. Then pediatric nursing, psychiatric nursing, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pharmacology and microbiology, the basic sciences. All this we are going to master in the days to come. So we started medical surgical nursing with uh, initially theory, but theory is going little slow. Let us quickly do the revision with the MCQs and discussion on each subject. That will be more interesting even for you. Let us solve 60 to 80 questions every day. That's how we try to finish the entire subjects for the staff nurse recruitment exam. So good to see six online classmates. Please punch Kashinath, Palakurti and many more. Please punch whether the voice is loud and clear for all of you. Uh, please punch whoever is there online. Jo bhi online mein hai. Hello bolke punch karo chat window mein. Aawaz aare. Broadcast smooth hai ya nahi. Jira ek baar aapka parishai karo. Jo bhi online may abhi prasthut hai, right? So let's make the start, uh, sister. How do you manage pleural effusion? The procedure is called thoracosynthesis. So one to two centimeters, one to two intercostal space below the upper level of the pleural fluid in the mid scapular line, five to 10 centimeters lateral to the spine. This is the spine, right? Five to 10 centimeters lateral to the spine in the mid scapular line. You will first uh, tuck, 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 tuck. You will see until where the dull area of the effusion fluid is there. Below that, one to two intercostal space below that, you will be doing the aspiration is what you need to remember. Good to see Muhammad, Shabana and many more who are all online. And what is pleurodesis? In this you will pass a chemical irritant is injected into the pleural cavity. So typically you have the lungs. Around the lung there is a parietal pleura Attached to the lung, there is a visceral pleura. Between them, there is a potential space. Whenever that is filled with air, you call pneumothorax. Whenever it is filled with the blood, you call hemothorax. Hemothorax. So, the, in few people, they keep on recurrently, recurrently they keep on getting pleural effusion, recurrent pleural effusions. In such people, you need to pass a irritant so that both the visceral and parietal pleura stick with each other so that in future I in the effusion nahi hoga, pneumothorax nahi hoga. So is liye, jabbi recurrent pneumothorax hota hai, Recurrent pleural effusion hota hai. Tab am chemical irritant ko inject karte hai pleural space ke andar. Jis ko kete hai pleurodesis is what you need to remember. So right lung pleural effusion. What will happen uh, sister? Both A and B will happen. 
whenever right lung has a lot of pleural effusion it will push the trachea to opposite side so this is also correct and uh, because all this effusion fluid if you put the stethoscope if you put the stethoscope you can't hear the sound of the lungs which are buried underneath that pleural effusion fluid that's the reason there will be absence of breath sounds on the side where there is pleural effusion so this is how you see radiologically a massive pleural effusion so if you happen to put a stethoscope here then you can't hear the lung sounds then another important thing is whenever you have a lot of effusion the trachea become deviated to opposite side so what is suggestive of pulmonary edema pulmonary edema can the online students can punch whether the voice is loud and clear for all of you is the voice loud and clear mohammed shabana and everybody can you please punch so sister nose from the nose larynx larynx become trachea from the trachea it become bronchi bronchi become bronchioles finally it will become alveolus so what are the air you are breathing is coming through all this and reaching the alveolus around the alveolus the pulmonary capillary carries the blood and there is a capillary endothelium so whatever oxygen that is coming from outside need to enter into the pulmonary capillary whatever carbon dioxide produced in the body need to leave the pulmonary uh, capillary into alveolus so please punch is the voice loud and clear for all of you yes thank you shabana for the feedback so whenever there is a lot of fluid between alveolus and the pulmonary capillary then you call it as pulmonary edema pulmonary edema whenever there is edema then oxygen cannot enter blood so there is a decrease in uh oxygen correct answer is a not d correct answer is a there is a decrease in oxygen but if you look at the carbon dioxide even if fluid is there it has 40 times 40 times it is soluble in that fluid isliye pulmonary edema hone ke baad bhi carbon dioxide bahar niklega magar oxygen andar nahi aayega so isliye there is a decreased oxygen but normal carbon dioxide whenever pulmonary edema whenever the pathology is between alveolus and pulmonary capillary is what you need to remember the second type, this is called type 1 type 1 respiratory failure respiratory failure but if you have a patient who has a bronchial asthma severe bronchial asthma the whole bronchi are severely constricted then oxygen cannot come in and uh, carbon dioxide cannot go out that is the reason they will have low oxygen with high carbon dioxide in the blood this is called type 2 respiratory failure type 2 type 2 type 1 what is common both of them have low oxygen but type 1 has normal carbon dioxide whereas type 2 has increased carbon dioxide is what you have to remember so 
please remember this very important uh, illustration system type 1 type 2 type 1 is called hypoxemic respiratory failure type 2 is called hypercapnic respiratory failure hypoxic ka matlab kya hota hai oxygen is less than 60 it may be oxygen is decreased but additionally this will also have increased PaCO2 is what you have to remember. So how do you know that the person has pleurisy? So pleurisy is an inflammation of pleura. So whenever pleurisy is there, there is a sharp stabbing pain when the person is breathing. So what is the cause of pleurisy in India, doctor, sister? TB. हम इस देश के वासी हैं जिस देश में टीबी बहती है जब भी टीबी होता है लंग में ऊपर रहने वाला प्लूरा भी इन्फ्लेम हो जाएगा ऊपर रहने वाला प्लूरा आल्सो इज इन्फ्लेम्ड एंड दैट लीड टू डेवलपमेंट ऑफ प्लूरेसी सो व्हेन एवर प्लूरेसी इज देयर व्हेन द लंग इज इंफेक्टेड ओवरलाइंग प्लूरा इज आल्सो इन्फ्लेम्ड एंड द पर्सन विल हैव अ स्टैबिंग पेन Whenever they take the inspiration, whenever you take inspiration, what will happen? The lung will expand and it will touch this pleura, which is inflamed. And that lead to development of the pain in pleurisy is what you have to remember. So with regard to the pleural fluid, very good. Hum bahut khush hai. Eight online classmates a gaya hai. Right? So... Uh, please inform all your friends. Every day we will have one to two hours of discussion and we finish 10,000 MCQs are there. We will try to discuss as many as we can before the exam. Okay. Now, sister, how do you identify, I mean, with regard to the plural fluid, what is plural fluid? Plural fluid act like a lubricant. आपको कार में लुब्रिकेंट लगाते ना टायर्स में टायर्स में लुब्रिकेंट डालते तो लुब्रिकेंट का काम करेगा प्लूरल फ्लूइड प्लूरल फ्लूइड रिड्यूस द फ्रिक्शन बिटवीन द विसरल एंड द पेराइटल प्लूरा व्हेन एवर द लंग इज एक्सपैंडिंग एंड वेरी मिनिमल अमाउंट नॉर्मली प्लूरल फ्लूइड इज वेरी मिनिमल अमाउंट इज टिपिकली देयर so in which condition pleural effusion occur, sister? Congestion heart failure, cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome, they all can lead to pleural effusion. Achha bhaiya. There are two types of pleural effusion. Two types of pleural effusion. One is called transudate, other is called exudate. One is called transudate, other is called exudate. Abhi aagaya, Professor Kashinar. Very good, very good. So, plural effusion is divided into transudate and exudate. What do you mean by transudate? So, typically when the blood is flowing in the pulmonary blood vessels, the blood vessels of the lung, in that blood is flowing. So blood has protein, albumin. This albumin prevents the fluid from leaving the blood vessel. From leaving the blood vessel. Suppose you have a nephrotic syndrome uh, baby. In him all his protein is lost into urine. So there is no protein in the blood. So nobody stops fluid. It will leave the blood vessel and that forms plural effusion. So nephrotic syndrome may you have a plural effusion. Similarly, cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is a problem of the liver. So when the liver is affected, liver cannot to produce, cannot to produce proteins. So in them, albumin is low whenever cirrhosis of liver is there. 
there also the fluid will leave. That is also the cause of pleural effusion. Whenever congestive heart failure is there, what will happen? Whenever congestive heart failure is there, what will happen? So typically, what is the circulation of the heart, uh, sister? You are having the lungs, right? From lungs, good to blood, good blood, good blood, good blood of the lungs, oxygenated blood from the lungs will come into left atrium, through the mitral valve goes into left ventricle, through that aortic valve it goes into aorta and goes to the whole body. Then on the right side what will happen, superior vena cava from above, Inferior vena cava from below will bring the blood to bad blood, bad blood, right side, good blood, left side. So, IVC, SVC bring the bad blood to right atrium. Between right atrium, right ventricle, what is there? Tricuspid valve. From the right ventricle, it will go into pulmonary artery through the pulmonic valve pulmonic valve and through the right artery, uh, pulmonary artery, it will go to the lung. It will go to the lung. So, what will happen whenever there is any heart failure? Left ventricle is unable to pump the blood. That cause high pressure in left ventricle. That cause high pressure in left atrium. That cause high pressure in pulmonary veins. That cause the pulmonary venous blood to leave the blood vessel and form the effusion. Understand? So, congestive heart failure also cause effusion. But whether it is congestive heart failure or whether it is cirrhosis or nephrotic syndrome, it is called transudate. It is called transudate. But other situation, Typically, this lung, the lung, you know, the pleura. Suppose if there is any infection of the lung, like TB or pneumonia, then there is an inflammation. There is an inflammation. That inflammation will cause pleura to produce effusion. Such type of inflammatory effusion coming from the pleura is called is called exudate. So what are the causes of exudate? Pneumonia, TB, malignancy, any connective tissue disorder like rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, any pancreatitis, esophageal rupture, chylothorax, they all cause exudative effusion. Such an effusion, if you take out, no? If you do thoracocentesis and take out that fluid, send it to the lab, it will have high WBC count because it is due to inflammation. But a transudative is because of cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome, pulmonary embolism, pericardial disease or congestive heart failure. Suppose if there is any pericardial disease, so heart is sitting between lungs, no? If the Covering on the heart, pericardium, if it is inflamed, then even the pleura of the lungs also get inflamed and that can lead to pleural effusion. But these are all what? Transudates. These are all transudates, but these are all exudates. That is what you need to appreciate. Very nice to see Kavita Yadav, Haimavati, Kashinan. Muhammad Shabana and many more. So that is all the story, sister. Now, what is the nursing action that will help to give maximum benefit when you are doing postural drainage? So, whenever, so, suppose somebody had an operation. Post-operatively, patient is moved to 
post operatively patient is moved to ward so he must be put in a position such that drainage of his lung secretion sector so to clear those secretions encourage the patient to cough is a way by which you make the a nurse should make the patient to cough so that there is a drainage of all the secretions that happen it is called postural drainage is what you should remember so if uh, you want uh, secretions of the apical lobe of the lung to drain this is the position where you make patient if apical posterior posterior part you want to drain make the patient to lie down like this if the anterior segments of the upper lobes then make the patient to lie down in this position if the right to posterior segment if secretions are there they need to be drained make the patient lie down like this left to posterior segment make him to lie down and suppose right middle lobe if it is there raise the foot end and make the secretions to get drained so what is this called as postural drainage of secretions is a very important nursing technique you should know how to position the patient depending upon which lobe of the lung you have the lesion right sister so such patients you encourage them to cough deeply is what you should remember so where will you insert the test tube between second and third intercostal space whenever you have pneumothorax so this is so where will you for you to put the intercostal drainage tube anteriorly pectoralis major lateral edge of pectoralis major superiorly base of axilla laterally anterior edge of the latissimus dorsi muscle then inferiorly from the nipple you draw the line typically this is in fifth intercostal space and this is the area where you put the chest tube drainage so please remember base of axilla lateral edge of latissimus dorsi lateral edge of pectoralis major and fifth intercostal space is the classical location for placing the intercostal drainage so once you put the intercostal drainage typically the fluid comes and drains to the underwater seal so after placing the tube you apply suture to hold it in position then you take a chest x ray so what are the common landmarks for you to put intercostal drainage tube fourth and fifth intercostal space anterior to mid axillary line this is axilla axillary line second inter intercostal space at the upper border of the third rib if it is mid clavicular line clavicular line so that's where you need to place the tube chest tube is inserted into fourth and fifth intercostal space typically in pneumothorax you need to remember so this is how the chest tube drainage typically happens this is the chest tube drainage typically happens now the chest tube if you do clamping clamping so all the drainage is coming out at one point of time you thought of uh, clamping if you do clamping what will happen so basically this is the rib cage inside that you have the lung and around that you pass the intercostal drainage tube and if you clamp this what will happen uh, sister 
the air cannot come out and it remains inside and new air is being uh, picked, uh, drawn by the lungs so that will cause too much accumulation of the air and that lead to tension pneumothorax which will occur whenever you do the clamping of the chest tube so very nice to see 11 online classmates very good you invite some more of your friends sister and every day hum sab milenge milke padhai karenge aur is session ke baad hum youtube se ye pura video ko nikal denge aur ye video ko hum स्कोर नर्सिंग प्रेप ऐप के अंदर अपलोड करेंगे आपको तीन चार दिन में हम ऐप तैयार हो जाएगा आपको दे देंगे और ऐप के अंदर दस हजार से ज्यादा क्वेश्चन है क्वेश्चन बैंक है तो आपको रिविजन मॉक टेस्ट के जैसे रिविजन कर सकते हो और नोट्स भी रहता है राइट बराबर और डेली लाइव क्लास भी होता है सब चीजें खाली दो हजार में एक साल के लिए दो हजार में कोई स्टूडेंट ने पूछा कि क्या सर हर एक महीना दो हजार है क्या नहीं भाई पूरा एक साल आपको सब्सक्रिप्शन मिल जाएगा अगर तीन चार महीने में अगर आप स्टाफ नर्स रिक्रूटमेंट एग्जाम क्रैक कर दिए तो आपके जूनियर को गिफ्ट दे दो उसको आपके सब्सक्रिप्शन काउंटिल वायलिटी चलेगा ठीक है so today only take every opportunity to subscribe to score nursing prep app this is the best thing in the entire country pura desh mein kahi bhi aapko md general medicine wale doctor aake teach nahi karega koi msc nursing wale ya bsc nursing wale teach karega wo bhi acha teachers hai usme kuch bhi nahi hai bhai sahab kuch bhi nahi hai कोई भी अध्यापक होता है विद्यार्थी के ऊपर बहुत प्यार से प्रिपेयर होके उनको पढ़ाते हैं ताकि वो सुपर ज्ञानी बन के ही कैन प्रिपेयर एंड गेट गुड रैंक इन द एग्जाम दट ही प्रिपेयर सो टीचर नर्स है या डॉक्टर है या एमडी डॉक्टर है और डीएम डॉक्टरेट इन मेडिसिन है फर्क नहीं है आपके समझ में आना हम आपको नोट्स देते हैं 300 पेजेस का उसका रिवीजन करें तो बस काफी है और दस हजार क्वेश्चन का डिस्कशन भी करते हैं हम बराबर सो प्लीज कम एवरी डे बी पार्ट ऑफ द व्हाट्सएप स्टडी ग्रुप बिकॉज यूर ऑल ऑनलाइन वी विल लेट यू नो Eight o'clock or nine o'clock. Sometimes I get time at eleven o'clock in the night. Be prepared to come and attend the live online session. So now, what is the correct chest tube placement? अगर chest tube लगा दिए, lung expand हो गया तो आपको bronco vesicular sounds सुनाई देना चाहिए. जिसका मतलब है लंग इज एक्सपैंडिंग सो यू शुड नो इफ यू पुट द स्टेटोस्कोप ऑन द ट्रेक द साउंड दैट यू लिजन इज कॉल्ड ब्रॉन्कियल साउंड बराबर एपेक्स ऑफ द लंग इफ यू पुट स्टेटोस्कोप दैट साउंड इज कॉल्ड बिसाइकुलर साउंड एंड रिमेनिंग पार्ट सेंट्रली इट इज कॉल्ड ब्रॉन्को बिसाइकुलर sounds in a client where you placed chest tube <coughs> if the water seal chamber there is no fluctuation of the water what does it mean that means see this is lung sister This is the rib cage, and this side lung. This side lung. So you placed uh, a intercostal drainage tube. So there is 
there is a uh, little air in the pressure inside between the visceral and parietal pleura so every time lung is receiving air by breathing expanding contracting then the pressure also between the pleura is changing so the change in the pressure will come down and in this water seal to which the tube is connected you will see the water column rising and falling <clears throat> if that is there that means no problem it is in continuation with pleural cavity but if it is not there that means there is either kinking of this tube somewhere press ho gaya right or maybe the lung expanded so much that it is completely visceral and parietal pleura are adherent to one another and there is no pressure transmitted so one of the two is a possibility so this is how the collection chamber water seal suction control chamber you might have seen in the hospital every day lot of intercostal drainage tube placed typically by the pulmonologists now a patient has chest tube on his right chest which was connected to the water seal the tubes got dislodged from the water seal as a nurse what is your immediate action you need to reconnect the tubes to the water seal lot of times when patient is being moved from one ward to the other ward the tubes to the water seal will become dislodged then simply reconnect it how do you know that intercostal drainage tube is properly functioning so whenever there is an oscillation of the water column in the drainage bottle no that means chalo bhai it is working properly deep vein thrombosis what is the risk it can lead to pulmonary embolism so whenever in the deep vein you are having a thrombus it can embolize and reach to pulmonary circulation so commonly it is a deep vein thrombosis that go to the lung and suddenly it will cause the blockade of the pulmonary artery is called pulmonary embolism so whenever there is a closed chest drainage what is the important principle sister gravity negative pressure suction they are the ones which lead to the closed chest drainage now whenever you are planning you will tell see the doctor tells the sister sister kavita i am going to put a i am going to take out the fluid from the pleural cavity in this patient of pleural effusion but as a nurse what will you do first most important thing explain the procedure to him bhaiya aapke seene mein hum chaaku nahi chala rahe hum kya kar rahe wo explain karna patient ko lot of times as doctors we and as nurses you 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 fail to communicate the patient patient is worried because you are putting a needle into the chest oh my god so you should tell see deko ramaya these are your lungs around that there is a pleura inside that there is fluid and what our doctor goodlingam is going to do is he is going to put a needle into that and take out the fluid out there and we send that to the laboratory so that we will know what is the cause is it a transudate is it a exudate agar transudate hai to what are the causes cirrhosis of liver nephrotic syndrome etc if it is exudate tb is one of the very important cause so is it exudate or transudate is it tb or not a tb 
you will be doing the analysis. All this you should nicely explain to the patient. That is very, very important. The pericosynthesis was performed on an adult client. Pericosynthesis, pleural fluid is being taken out, but patient has hemoptysis. Pulse is 80, respiration 28, temperature 99. What is the worst thing out of all these presenting problems of the patient? Hemoptysis, dangerous. Hemoptysis means cuffing the blood is called hematemesis, hemoptysis. Hemoptysis. Other is hematemesis. Emesis ka matlab hota hai vomiting blood. Tysis ka matlab hota hai coughing the blood. Coughing the blood. So of all these symptoms, if the patient is having hemoptysis, then that is the worst and most severe thing is what you need to remember. When is thoracosynthesis contraindicated? Whenever there is you are putting needle into the pleural cavity, which is there around the lung. So if the patient has a bleeding disorder, clotting disorder, uncooperative pressure, any cardiac problem, there are all the contraindications to thoracosynthesis mana hai. Now acute pulmonary edema patient is in. So which position you want to put him in? You want to put him in high Fowler's position. Achha bhaiya, high Fowler kya hota hai? Semi Fowler kya hota hai? You need to be very, very sure about each of these points. Yeah, so let me update everybody that our live class is going on. So, so sister, what is a fowler and semi fowler position? So, if you place the patient in a semi sitting position. By raising the head and trunk 90 degrees, you can still keep the knees extended. This is called high fowler. So whenever pulmonary edema is there, always raise the head end of the uh, bed and make the patient to lie down. I mean, sitting position. This is called semi fowler. Usko aur aage. करे तो उसको फाउलर बोलते हैं पूरा 90 डिग्रीज कर दिए तो उसको हाई फाउलर बोलते हैं हाई फाउलर फाउलर सेमी फाउलर यू नीड टू बी वेरी श्योर सो व्हेन एवर पल्मोनरी एडिमा इज देयर ट्राई टू कीप द पेशेंट कंप्लीटली अपराइट एंड ट्राई टू कीप देयर हेड एंड शोल्डर्स एलिवेटेड दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट 
ICD is inserted in a patient who has pneumothorax, but unfortunately ICD is malpositioned, then what is the important complication of malpositioned intercostal drainage tube? So you are having the lungs above that rib cage and around the lungs you are having the pleural cavity. You, you, you placed the ICD, but it got misplaced. Whenever it get misplaced, na, to kya karega? Pura lung ke andar air jo bhi hai, pleura ke andar, pleura mein yaan pe opening kar rahe ho, jab intercostal drainage tube chala rahe ho. To, to agar misplaced ho gaya, to pura air kya ho jata? Surrounding skin ke niche aayega. So isliye usko subcutaneous emphysema ho jayega. Aur uska pneumothorax aur version ho jayega. Agar aapka intercostal drainage tube sahi taraf Plural cavity ke andar ja ke nahi baite to. That is what you need to remember. What is the most common clinical sign of pulmonary embolism? So what is pulmonary embolism? So you have the heart. Once more right atrium, right, uh, sorry, left atrium, left ventricle. Right atrium, right ventricle. Right ventricle goes into pulmonary artery. Left ventricle goes into iota. Now, whenever pulmonary embolism is there, into this pulmonary artery, there is a clot. Then when right ventricle is trying to pump the blood from right ventricle into pulmonary artery, it needs to use a lot of pressure. And that causes the pressure in the right ventricle increase. At a point of time, right ventricle will go into Failure. Mere bus mein nahi ho rahe. Pura darwaza band ho gaya. Mai us band huye darwaza ke andar pulmonary artery mein. If I have to pump, mere bus mein nahi ho ga. So, when pressure in the right ventricle is increased, that causes pressure in the right atrium to increase. And who is draining into right atrium? Superior vena cava? Inferior vena cava? jugular vein and all the pressure in the jugular vein will increase so that is the right heart failure will occur understand uh, sister so the most common clinical sign is increased respiratory rate tachypnea is the most common clinical sign now this is a very interesting question sister for prevention of further pulmonary embolism, how much heparin, intravenous heparin ka infusion dosage kitna hai? So the maintenance dosage is 18 mg per kg per hour. So please remember this very important thing, sister. So what is the recommended dosage of heparin for maintenance? You should remember less than one year, 25 units per kg per hour. More than one year, 20 units per kg per hour. 16 years, 18 units per kg per hour based upon the age the unfractionated heparin dosage you need to remember so patient weight into dose required divided by heparin concentration will give you the number of ml per hour that you need to do the infusion of the heparin is what you need to remember so our patient weight 3 units per kg per hour is 25 number of units required is 75 and uh, per hour you need to run 3.75. So this table you need to basically understand and remember. So now sister, what is the current correct statement about transudative, transudate? So basically transudate is because of what 
increased pressure, hydrostatic pressure inside the blood vessel. Like in congestive heart failure, you get the pleural effusion. It is due to decreased oncotic pressure. So whenever albumin protein is there, it will not let the fluid go out. It will hold the fluid inside the vessel. So if good to protein, if protein is good, no pleural effusion. If the protein is less, there is pleural effusion. Similarly, it is very clear. Transudates are clear. Their protein content is less than 3. But exudates, they have a lot of inflammatory cells like pus. So they are very much yellow colored fluid. The moment you are drawing the pleural effusion fluid, if it is very, very much yellow colored, then you should think of exudate, not transudate. But when you are drawing, if it is coming like coconut water, pure, clear fluid, pleural effusion fluid, then it is transudate is what you need to remember. So with regard to the exudates, excellent, my wonderful brothers and sisters, 13 online students, please tell all your friends, seniors, juniors, everybody. Score nursing prep app, Dr. Murli Bharadwaj classes for staff nurse recruitment exam, the best in the country. We love to create knowledgeable brothers and sisters. Ultimately, patient care, kiske hath mein hai? Nurses ke hath mein hai. Hamare doctors ke hath mein todi hai. Understand? So that is the reason. 10,000 MCQs I will discuss. And also I will give you 300 pages notes to do revision. And uh, video library. After this class is over, we remove the video from YouTube. We upload the video into the SCORE nursing prep app. So, isliye, today only, please request on the WhatsApp that you want to take the staff nurse exam coaching subscription. Kali do hazar mein, only 2000 rupees only, one year subscription. Hardly it is 200 rupees per month. Nothing. Because a lot of nurses come from middle class. There's no point in charging 10,000, 20,000, 15,000. But still we charge a little because we need to run the app. Some cost is involved. All right. So please take every chance. Anything, any doubt you have, type it into the WhatsApp chat group. 24x7 I am available. For any doubts, I am there to give you an answer. Right, sister? So... Continuing our discussion about exudates, what will you remember? Their specific gravity is more than 1.020. They are very cloudy. Their protein content is high. And it is not the capillary pressure. It is the capillary permeability. So whenever there is any infection, that organism will come and cause the permeability of the vascular endothelium. This is called endothelium. And that will make the fluid inside to leave the blood vessel. So increased capillary permeability due to infection is the cause of exudate. Increased capillary pressure because of congestive heart failure leads to transudate. Transudative pleural effusion is what you need to remember. Now, from where the DVT emboli commonly lodge? Where will they go in the land? So what is a thrombus? Thrombus kya hota hai sister? Thrombus is a clot. Embolus, 
embolus is a floating floating clot it is a floating clot a clot which started floating it will ultimately reach the heart through the heart it will go into the lungs and in the pulmonary artery it will go and land and that lead to that is called pulmonary embolism is what you have to remember so the dvt emboli most commonly lodged in the lung is what you need to remember what is the common cause of pulmonary embolism it is the thrombi in the deep veins deep venous throm thrombus lead to embolism so whenever pulmonary embolism is there how do you treat the order both b and c so what is happening what is streptokinase streptokinase is called thrombolytic heparin is called anti thrombotic so what is by thrombo thrombo means clot already clot formed in the pulmonary artery first you need to break it hai na to isliye hum streptokinase dete hain jo thrombolytic hai wo clot ko break karega aur dusra heparin ya warfarin ye sab cheezon ko kya bolte hain anti thrombotic they prevent a thrombus from forming that is what you need to remember so whenever consolidation of the lung is there how do you identify what are the clinical features whenever consolidation so bhaiya pehla consolidation kya hota hai whenever there is any infection pneumonia then there is a patch that forms na this is called consolidation consolidation all right sister so whenever consolidation is there how do you identify that on x ray on the x ray whenever consolidation is there then the bronchi which are containing the air air inside the bronchi it's called air bronchogram is what you should remember wo air bronchogram dikhayega agar consolidation hai to jab consolidation hota hai If you put stethoscope, chik, 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 on 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 then the that that sound become more transmitted to your ulnar border that's called increased phlegmitus these are all the signs of consolidation is what you need to remember so with that we will conclude sister we finish with 30 questions slowly we will increase capacity 30 to 60 60 to 100 every sitting totally 10000 questions are there the moment you do revision along with me this 10000 questions koi bhi rukega nahi nor set ko jao nahi to unke baap staff recruitment exam ko jao nahi to america jao nclex ke liye nahi to middle east jao hard likhne ke liye एमओ एच एग्जाम लिखने के लिए कहीं भी जाओ ये बेसिक्स अगर आपको सॉलिड हो गया तो टेन थाउजेंड क्वेश्चन को आप मास्टर कर दिए मुरली भरद्वाज के साथ कोई भी रुकेगा नहीं आपको टॉप रैंक मिलने में सो फॉर सब्सक्राइबिंग टू दिस कोर्स जस्ट टू थाउजेंड रुपीज इज द फी प्लीज डायरेक्टली मैसेज मी फ्रीक्वेंट on the whatsapp and i will be more than happy to help you so good night and once more tomorrow 
morning we will meet if you are from hyderabad please come to center if more students are there in the center we enjoy to teach even 2 3 hours also all right sister thank you